Greetings. We welcome you back with another installment of the week that was by the Martinez Girls College. We shall begin with the headlines of the national segment, which are holding grand virtual rallies in the midst of terrible pandemic. Madurai girl becomes goodwill ambassador to the underprivileged. Indian origin Prabhakar Raghavan appointed as the head of Google search. Oil well in Assam turns into raging in Shon. The news in detail. On Tuesday, 9th June, the BJP set up 70,000 flat screen TVs and 15,000 giant LED screens across West Bengal for a virtual rally. An estimated budget came around to a whooping 100 crore. Yet, so many migrant workers and the laborers hit by the coronavirus lockdown had to travel on foot for days without food and water. 13-year-old M. Negra, the daughter of a salon owner in Madurai, has been appointed as the goodwill ambassador to the poor for the United Nations Association of Development and Peace. The 13-year-old girl convinced her father to donate rupees 5 lakh that he saved for her education to the needy in the COVID-19 lockdown. Indian origin Prabhakar Raghavan has been elevated as the head of Google Search and Google Assistant. With degrees from IIT Madras and University of California, Berkeley, Raghavan started his career in Google with in 2012, bringing with him vast experiences from his previous jobs at IBM and Yahoo. A damaged Oil India Limited well in Assam's Tinsukia district turned into a raging inferno on Tuesday, June 9th. 3,000 people were evacuated as the fire spread to the nearby villages and burnt down trees. It caused the death of two firefighters and also caused damage to the local biodiversities. The damage comes a month after oil received its environmental clearance from the Ministry of Forest and Environment and Climate Exchange for drilling and testing of hydrocarbons in seven locations under the Khrai Sakwai National Park, which activists and locals have been protesting. The special segment for today is How well is the health sector holding up under Atmanirbhar Bharat? allotted an entire 69,000 crore rupees to the health sector on 1st February 2020. Two days earlier, on 31st January, WHO had already declared the coronavirus as a global health emergency. Despite this, as we enter the month of June, healthcare essentials are running low. Mumbai is down to just 30 ICU beds now. Iqbal Chahal, the chief of Mumbai's civic body, the PMC, has said that the state government plans to add more beds in the coming days. The Delhi government has planned to use hotels as makeshift hospitals. Chennai and Telangana are struggling too in keeping up with the demands of beds for COVID patients. It is intriguing that the central government has no collateral help to offer to the states. India's federal system is indeed being upheld firmly during this pandemic. Or is it? In four months, the price of the essential N95 masks has gone up by, guess what, 250%. The National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority refuses to cap the price of the masks as it may disincentivize domestic manufacturing. As of May 7, 12.2 crore Indians already lost their jobs throughout the month of April. And now, for a basic precaution such as a face mask, they must pay Rs 165 as opposed to the original price of Rs 70 in January. The NPPA is certainly providing incentives at the cost of the safety of millions of people. Is this our Atmanirbhar Bharat? Now on to the international news. Here are the headlines for international news. New Zealand lives
lifts all COVID-19 restrictions on the nation. Nepal adopts a new map legally on 9th June. U.S. House Democrats aim to vote soon on police reform bill. The news in detail. New Zealand has lifted almost all of its coronavirus restrictions after reporting no new cases for more than two weeks now. Under new rules, social distancing is not required and there are no limits on public gatherings. But borders remain close to foreigners. Your immediate reaction when you heard there were no active cases of COVID-19 remaining in New Zealand? Um, I, I did a little dance. Nepal adopted a new constitutional amendment to give constitutional backing to the new map that shows the Indian territories of Lipu Lake, Kalapani and Limpiadura as its own. The ongoing dispute dates back to 1816, when under the Treaty of Sogoli, Nepal lost parts of its territory. Uh, our map accurately depicts the sovereign territory of India. The new map has in no manner revised our boundary with Nepal. The boundary delineation exercise with Nepal is ongoing under the existing mechanism. We reiterate our commitment to find a solution through dialogue in the spirit of our close and friendly bilateral relationship. At the same time, and I think this is very important to note, that both sides should guard against vested interests who are out there to create some differences between the two. The Democrats have put forward sweeping legislation aimed at addressing police brutality, the first concrete step towards action from Washington as a national movement emerges. The effort comes as the United States is reeling from recent death of several black Americans at the hands of the police, including George Floyd. The Justice and Policing Act establishes a bold, transformative vision of policing in America. Never again should the world be subjected to witnessing what we saw on the streets in Minneapolis, the slow murder of an individual by a uniformed police officer. The new bill aims to ban chokeholds and incentives state and local governments to conduct racial bias training for officers. It would also require federal uniformed police officers to wear body cameras. And now for some news on the environment. Oil spills, mankind's man-made disaster. On 29th May, Russia declared a state of emergency due to leakage of 20,000 tons of oil into the Ambarnia River. When the pillars supporting the fuel tank built on permafrost collapsed due to global warming in Naril's Siberia. What do you mean you've finished your report on the situation? What's going to be done? You're the governor. Wait a second, in your opinion, what happened? And why did the authorities only learn about it after two days? What, are we going to learn about emergency situations from social media now? Are you in your right mind over there? Oil spills are nothing new to mankind. The world witnessed the largest oil spill in human history, the Gulf War oil spill, in January 1991. As a desperate military move to impede US troops from attempting beach landings, Iraqi forces had opened oil wells of the Sea Island pipeline, releasing oil from numerous tankers. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill that began on April 20, 2010, remains to this date the world's largest marine oil spill in human history. This oil spillage had an adverse effect on marine reproductive life. Now, we will learn the aspects of general knowledge from the world of science. The process of naming cyclones. The naming of cyclones began with the aim of quick identification of storms in warning messages. The guidelines for naming cyclones include that the proposed name should be short, easy to pronounce, culturally sensitive, provided with its pronunciation and voiceover among many. The process of naming cyclones involves several countries in the region. 
and is done under the aegis of the World Meteorological Organization. For the Indian Ocean region, eight countries in the region, Bangladesh, India, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Thailand all contribute a set of names which are assigned sequentially whenever a cyclonic storm develops. The India Meteorological Department has listed out some criteria. The name should be short and readily understood when broadcast. Now we bring to you news from the entertainment industry. Veteran writer lyricist Javed Akhtar on Sunday, June 7th, found it to be a great honor to be named this year's recipient of the Richard Dawkins Award. He became the first Indian to be given the honor for critical thinking, holding religious dogma up to scrutiny, advancing human progress and humanist values. Word of the week, herd immunity. When most of a population is immune to an infectious disease, it provides indirect protection or herd immunity, also called herd protection, to those who are not immune to the disease as it stops community transmission. Now we have the personality of the week. Basu Chatterjee maker of approximately 40 films, passes away at the age of 90. Basu Chatterjee directed about 40 films, including commercial successes like Rajni Gandha, Swami and Ek Ruka Hua Faisla. His stories present the common man's life with a simplicity that intrigues you with its realism. Basu Chatterjee's world is one where women too can breathe and exist independently without being apologetic for their freedom, as is seen in the film Swami. Basu Chatterjee passed away last week at the age of 90. His death remains a colossal loss. Action springs not from thought but from a readiness for responsibility. On this note, we come to the end of this week's news. We will return next week with yet another news feed replete with more information and knowledge. Until then, stay safe, stay informed.